What's going on guys? Okay, so today we have a couple things to do on the E36 as a part of this series of preparing it for Tale of the Dragon. The first thing we have to do is we have to replace a couple bolts that hold on my camber plate on my Broadway static coilovers. The second thing we have to do is install some status group sway bar end links to attach my front sway bar. And then the last thing we have to do is my e-brake. We have to adjust it and just get it back in spec since changing the alignment, changing ride height kind of changes how it engages. Uh, have everything I need to do all this, so this should be pretty easy. And if we have time, we're also gonna paint some of the trim, the side molding and the rear bumper, because I already did the front bumper. And we'll detail it, both bottom and top. So this should be fun. First thing we gotta do though, is move the mom's car out, kind of put it in the driveway, that way we can get the E36 nice and centered in the garage and get to work. Let's get started. Issue number one, we're already running into. Battery on the GTI is dead. I mean like totally flat dead. I knew when I got into it and there was no dash lights. Should have realized that there was something wrong. So, I have an idea. I say I put this on the charger and go for a drive in the E36. Sounds like a pretty good plan to me. Before we get started working, go for a little fun drive. It is a beautiful day outside, so I figure why not? See if I can find the hood latch. Look at that. Engine bay looks amazing. Like I said, that is one fresh engine bay. <laughs> hey, what's up? Figure I'd give a quick little plug on the battery charger I use. This is called the Noco Genius One. I got this off Amazon and it was the uh, most highly rated battery charger I could find on there. This thing has been awesome. It has a lot of different automatic modes for the different battery types that you might need to charge with it. And I highly recommend this to anyone who doesn't drive their cars as often as you probably should. But unfortunately, that's my reality. So having one of these around is nice. Let's go ahead and disconnect the negative terminal though. This one likes to pop and spark and do all that fun stuff. So I'm gonna actually grab the cable to do it. There we go. Tuck that away like right there. And then you should be good to go to get up to the charger. Take the black in and put it on the negative. Terminal of your battery. Take the red, put it on the positive terminal. All right, so now that we have that squared away, the car is charging. I think we are good to go to go ahead and go for a quick drive in the E36. Give it a little battery, a little time to charge, and then we can go ahead and get started as planned. hot day very few clouds in the sky but a beautiful day for a drive so I'm not really upset that I have to do this right now before I get started working on the car Wow oh don't stall it Griffin <laughs>
her, she's only got one hand, but <laughs> just pretend. All right, going for my drive. We're gonna go ahead and pull these off. See if we have just enough charge to get it started. I'm hoping so, but uh, never know. So let's go ahead and get this snug, because sometimes if you don't have your ground nice and snug, it can cause issues. That was already kind of loose. All right, let's see what she wrote. Here we go. All right, so now that I've made the lovely decision to get it blisteringly hot, let's go ahead and pop the hood. Oh yeah, that's hot. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna be installing on the car today is really just a fix of something stupid that I've done slash other people have done, but it's not a big deal. This is a package from Broadway Suspension, which you've heard me talk about a million times before. Jay's and the guys over there are like family to me. And uh, let me tell you, more than once have I messed stuff up uh, and they've come through for me and helped me out. And this time, there was no questions asked. I was like, hey guys, how much do uh, how much are these parts gonna cost? And they just sent me an, uh, a shipping confirmation, and that was that. So I really appreciate these guys. I'm not sponsored by Broadway officially. I would love to be. Hey, Jays, the you can't see it. The Suvi needs uh, coilovers or bags. I don't care either one. <clears throat> and please help. <laughs> So he sent me these screws over. These are just replacement screws for the set screws for the camber plates. Uh, mine are stretched ever so slightly, I think. And uh, just good for peace of mind to go ahead and get fresh ones in there. So let's go ahead and put these in. This is why I love Jay's. I didn't even realize this. I opened up the package, found the screws, and Jay's also sent me my third, I bought two, Broadway suspension lanyard. And let me tell you, this is awesome because now I have one in addition to the one for my E36 as one to go for the Subaru, which means Jay's, I need some coilovers for the Subaru, <laughs> help me out. So this will actually mean something, but uh, anyways, <laughs> this is so cool. All right, let's go ahead and get these screws on. Thank you so much, Jay's. All right, so I can't lie, doing this is a little sketchy because I don't want my alignment to move, but how I'm gonna do it is just one at a time. Let's go ahead and, uh, maybe that's not good. Wow, those are tight. All right, so now that we got that taken care of, we have these, and these are status group, sway bar, and links. And these are actually going to convert my car from stock non-M style sway bar end links, which attach to the control arm, to a shock mounted style uh, sway bar end link. Now, some things to know if you're curious. Um, when you lower an E36 aggressively, which this one isn't that much anymore, but like mine was before, you pretty much, I mean, you can, but they're gonna be at a terrible angle. You pretty much can't run the stock non M end links on the control arm anymore. Uh, the car is just too low, and the sway bar and the control arm end up sitting like this far when you want like that much room for the end link to actually have function. So you can easily convert if your coilovers allow it. You can easily convert to M3 style end links and that's what we're going to do today. And I'm gonna walk you through the process of how to set them up with minimal preload, well, zero preload, how to dial them in and how on Broadway static coilovers you can actually adjust the height and we're gonna maximize the sway bar's usage. All right, so we are back with a little bit of brake clean and I got a 14 millimeter wrench, which is what size these nuts are. So you can see I went ahead and got it free. So now, what I'm going to do is, on all of them, I'm gonna take this nut off so you get down to these bare threads. I did get God's Holy Chemical brake cleaner. Take just a little bit. Let me go ahead and get my towel ready. And I'm just going to take these threads and try to make this to where you can see it. 
give them a good little clean. This is just so that the anti-seize doesn't want to turn into mud, basically. Uh, I hope that whole shot wasn't out of focus. <laughs> doesn't want to turn into mud, basically. And I'm going to go ahead and do that to both ends, and then I will skip to the part where I'm actually applying the anti-seize in the proper location. So now, what we're going to do is, this is always messy, so just be ready for it. Especially when you have a gigantic thing of anti-seize like this, but try to get as much off of the painter thing as possible. Oh my gosh. Okay, so now all you need is just a quick little boop. That's it. Just a quick little boop. <laughs> and that's it. Now take the other one, just a quick little boop. Maybe a little more, maybe one more boop. Boop. That's it. Close up your uh, grape spray paint can tube of death. Um, wipe it all over yourself so that you begin to turn into um, the, what is that thing from the Wizard of Oz? The Tin Man, you know what I'm talking about. Then go ahead, take the pieces. Pretty sure this one goes in just like that. And just put them back together. That is one end link done. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one and then we will get to the part where we are jacking up the car and installing them and I will show you how to preload these. All right, let's go ahead and break these lugs free. There we go. Go ahead and do the other side. Now I would say step one, jack up your car like I did last time, but uh, we're already at like step 30. So yeah, jack up your car. Although really in this case, I'm just jacking up the front and we're actually just gonna pull the wheel off on the jack. Cause I'm not getting underneath it. Lovely. Let me that down. All right, so that little guy right there is what we are after. This first part is pretty plain and simple. What we're gonna do is take this and delete these disgusting screws. Little teeny tiny bit of brake cleaner never hurt anybody. Here's what we're gonna do. So as you can see, these are adjustable. These actual, the mounting locations of these uh, sway bar end links. So, what we're going to do is actually try and orient them in the correct position, which if I'm not mistaken is backwards. It's been a little minute since the last clip, as you can tell it's dark now. And I've kind of just been going back and forth uh, trying to get these to a point I'm happy with them. Uh, really, I should be standing up to break these. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of talk about what I learned while I do a little bit of uh, last minute stuff. So, uh, I learned that you need to double check with these type of end links that all your sensor cables, brake lines, all that stuff did a bug just fly up my shirt? I swear it did. All your brake lines, sensors, wheel speed sensors, ABS, or ABS sensors is probably the better term, uh, brake pad wear sensor, all that stuff is not binding on the end link when you actually go to, uh, to turn. Uh, that was one thing I did wrong on both sides, so I just start over, redo that. Um, another thing, to consider is to make sure they're both set. If you have adjustable end link mounts, like on these coilovers, 
uh, to make sure that they're both set evenly on both sides. That was another thing I did wrong, so you can kind of see how time has added up and I've had to do this over and over again. Um, but what I just ended up doing was I finally got it right, at least set and installed right, the end links installed right. And what I just did was I had my dad back and forth, drive the car back and forth um, two times in and out of the garage just to let the suspension settle the little bit that it might. And then I had him sit in it while I reached up behind the wheel and I actually, so I grabbed the adjustable part of the end link and I went to the right until I felt some resistance, backed it off, went back to the left till I felt some resistance and set it somewhere in the middle. What that basically did was just ensure that there's no preload on the end link. So now I'm gonna go ahead and lock the lock nuts and then it should be time for a test drive. So let's go ahead and get these jam nuts tightened. I already did the other side. Wanted to make sure I didn't look like an idiot before I started recording. You know, sometimes I uh, feel like I do that anyways. Let's see, that needs to go that direction. Anyways, that's that. There you are. Get you started by hand. Go ahead and go ahead and just let me just. Yeah. Yeah. Alexa, clean my garage. What's going on guys? It is another gorgeous day outside. We are continuing work on the E36. Uh, got the sway bar and links done last night. Took it for a test drive. Didn't record the test drive, but uh, the car drives awesome. Uh, I had this clunk in the front end with my sway bar disconnected and it's gone. Over big bumps and stuff like that. So that's really cool. Uh, no binding, no weird issues like that. So I think we have a victory there and the steering feels a little bit of tighter too, but I, I think that might be in my head. So anyways, today what we're doing is we are going to fix the e-brake. And something you should know, uh, anytime you change the alignment, ride height wise, camber wise, uh, anything like that, on an E36, uh, you're gonna need to know that your e-brake is going to need adjusted. Uh, so what I'm gonna do today is actually walk you through my way of adjusting the e-brake and uh, show you how I like to do it to make it feel the best. And if you drift, this will help you uh, get your e-brake to where when you pull it, it'll lock the tires. So let's go ahead and get started. I literally have like four keys in my pocket right now. Stick a block of wood under there. Also, would it be an E36 if there wasn't miles of power steering fluid stains? I don't think so. So it should probably make sense now why I put the wood on the other side. Just so that when I go all the way up to get this thing on ramps, we're not raking the car left to right that badly. Now you still gotta lean this thing pretty good to get it all the way up on the ramps, but it's fine. So there we go. There is that one. Breezy. I had someone ask me, why do you put your how do you put your ramps backwards in the front? This is how.
So I just wanted to show this because I feel like it's a bit of a worthwhile information if you have an E36. So as you can see, the way I jack up the car is using the jack pad adapter, but I place the jack stands directly onto these plastic, uh, I don't even know, jack pads. Um, and if, if you see, my jack stand actually fits pretty much perfectly around the edges of them. And a lot of people say this is bad practice, but I've had great luck doing this and it protects the underbody of the car. I always make sure to place them in this orientation though, so that as you go to tilt the car by jacking up one side or the other, it wants to stay in place. Rather than, you know, like say you had it this, this way. That wouldn't exactly be ideal because then if as the car leans, it could potentially fall off the jack stand. So uh, yeah, just a little tip. Alright, so the next step is to hop in here and go ahead and lift up your armrest. Go ahead and unclip, be very gentle, especially if you have a really nice e-brake boot like mine. Go ahead and unclip your e-brake boot. Luckily though, it's pretty easy. Make sure it's not pulled. And then just very gently fold it over itself. Again, unpulled, very gently fold it over itself until you can access these screws. I'll get a better camera angle here in a second, but go ahead and get the e-brake boot to a position where you can work, and that's good. All right, so I went ahead and pulled the e-brake handle so you could see these. As you can see, there's these two nuts, and these are actually the nuts that control when your parking brake begins to engage. Just wanted to show you because we're gonna come back to these and I'm going to show you how you can adjust them to make your parking brake feel better than the OEM settings. All right, so the next step is actually only going to apply if you're someone like me and you have wheel studs. You're gonna come over here, go ahead and back one out. The reason for this is that in order to access the uh, parking brake shoe adjustment, you're gonna have to go through one of these holes in the brake rotor. So, since I have studs, I have to remove one. But if you have bolts, this step will not apply to you. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side off camera. All right, the next step is going to be a little difficult to show on camera, but you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the e-brake is off and that the car is out of gear. And you're gonna to wanna to grab a flashlight and rotate the hub using your flashlight until you can shine in and see this little cog wheel adjustment. And I'll do a little close up here in a second once I actually get to it. Also having studs makes rotating the hub way easier. I will say that. Although I'm probably about to go grab some gloves because these kind of hurt my hands. All right, so you can kind of see it. I had to record this clip on my phone. That's the cogwheel you're looking for. And uh, you'll see this is its position on the driver's side of the car. Uh, so hopefully this helps, but what we're going to do is, now I can't remember off the top of my head the correct direction to turn it, but essentially we're going to uh, loosen it, and what that's going to do is push the e-brake shoes outwards up against the uh, inside hat of this rotor, and uh, we're going to basically push them outwards to the point where they, um, they catch on the inside of this shoe and then we're gonna back them off just a touch. All right, so as you can see, I've gone ahead and just taken a little bit of slack out of the suspension with a jack. And the point of that is really just so that uh, I'm as close to where the car is sitting on the ground as possible. As you can imagine, the only way to really do that is to put a wheel on here. So I just like to get it as close as I can. I kind of just jack up until I feel a good bit of resistance, which is where I would assume the car would be on the ground or at least closer to it than full droop. So just a good idea because that does change the tension in the parking brake cable. Oh, parking brake cable. Whoa, <laughs> excuse me. All right, now let's go ahead and get this adjusted. I need to rotate the passenger side. I think I need to rotate downwards.
All right, yep, that's free. So now, little pro tip, I'm gonna start the car, and I'm just gonna verify that the wheels turn freely. I'm gonna put the car in gear, and make sure that it doesn't wanna idle or stall. That the other side is rotating free as well, which means we are done adjusting at the back. Okay, so now that we've gotten the shoes adjusted in the back, we're actually going to go ahead and tighten the cables. And uh, what you'll need to make this easiest is a nine millimeter deep socket and a 12 millimeter wrench. There's two nuts, you'll see them in a second. There's a larger nut in the back and a smaller nut in the front. And what we're actually going to do to make the e-brake work better than stock, like I had mentioned, is we're going to tighten it at a shorter interval than stock. So stock spec for tightening is one, two, three, four clicks, and then you tighten the nuts down and you're good to go. The problem with that is though, is that there's literally no tension in the cable until four clicks. And while that might be good for a worn in system, if you have brand new uh, cables and shoes like I do, that sucks. And if you wanna rip it to do drifts and stuff like that, it sucks. So I've never tried this before. We're gonna go ahead and try to just tighten it with all the way down so that as soon as I start to pull on it, we're tightening the shoes. We're gonna see if it works. I don't know if it's going to, but I'm pretty sure it will. So now I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to tighten down the cables. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is I've already broken these two nuts free from each other. Pretty self-explanatory how to do that. You just put the 12 millimeter wrench on the big one and you're nine deep on that a little one, break them free. And now we're going to spin the big nut all the way down. Like I said, my e-brake is all the way in the bottom position, all the way down until it butts up against the e-brake. Don't tighten it. And then we're gonna take the wrench, take the wrench, maybe. It's very tight in here. You'll you'll discover this if you go to do this. It'll be way easier. Go ahead and butt the one nut up against the other. These are called jam nuts. You can probably guess why. Right, there we go. So now you just butt one up against the other, tighten it down, and you're done. And just repeat that for the other side. All right, so as you can see, the lighting has changed. It has been a lovely time of going back and forth on what it should have been a super, super easy job. But of course, we all know that's not how things go. Anyways, now I'm just preparing to reinstall the uh, the studs, or the stud, I should say, that I removed. So I just like to take a little bit of brake cleaner, clean out the, uh, uh, probably not a bad idea. I should probably just go ahead and spray off the brake disc since I have been touching it. Go ahead and clean everything up. Now I'm gonna do the same to the stud, as you can see. Hopefully you can see that. It has a bunch of crusty Loctite on it. So, what we are going to do is go ahead and spray it off. Pretty much clean. Let's go ahead and put some blue Loctite on these and torque them down to 11 foot-pounds. Dab just a little bit of blue Loctite thread sealer on there. Thread it into the hub. Set to 11 foot pounds. Go ahead and take the stud. There we go, starting to get some torque. And that's it. Oh, phone. Not the same mistake three times in a row. Just like that.
great works, doesn't drag. I think we are pretty much done. And uh, yeah, so let's go back to the house and we'll go ahead and wrap things up. All right guys, that wraps up episode two of this series. Uh, it's been a blast. Uh, got the sway bar end links done and got the e-brake adjusted. Next week, we have to detail this thing. It is disgusting, both inside and out. So next week, I'm gonna walk through my wash detail process and uh, we'll get this thing fresh and then we will go for a rip and uh, then pretty much can just, uh, just enjoy it for a little while. It is going to need a cooling system refresh and a chase base power steering kit because my power steering is leaking. So uh, that's coming up soon. Well, I gotta get the finances together for that, but uh, it's coming along. So we're getting there, man. May, come May, tell the dragon. A lot of E36 is gonna be out there. I think it's gonna be a blast. But uh, anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. It means the world to me. I hope all of you are having an awesome day. Uh, keep your heads up. Uh, I promise you, <laughs> whatever you set your mind to, you can do it. And uh, yeah. Keep on moving. Thank you for watching. Last century.